January 6th Congressional Committee sending a message to former President Donald Trump. You've been served. The bipartisan panel issued a subpoena today along with a letter to Trump's lawyer saying he must testify either at the Capitol or by video conference by November 14th. The panel also directed Trump to produce documents and personal communications with members of Congress and extremist groups. Trump is expected to fight that subpoena in court. Here to break down all the top political headlines is WGN political analyst Paul Lisnick. Thank hey you, Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Let's talk a little bit about that subpoena. Yeah. You say it'll never happen. Why? Well, the subpoena happened, but he'll never but show he'll up. he'll never show up. He'll never show up to and testify. those documents. You know what? It, it, it raises the question, why did they wait till the end of their tenure to do this and not do it at the beginning? Now, there's an explanation for that, which is to say they were building their case, looking at what was going on, wouldn't have subpoenaed him until they had the evidence to do it. That's one argument. But I think the bottom line to this is this is a subpoena that is simply a, a note for their report. It's a note for history that they reached out. Now, never say never. I mean, I have a funny feeling but President Trump would actually like to appear and talk. I'm thinking his lawyers won't let him do that. I will encourage him not to. But listen, we know he likes to appeal. He files appeals. And at this point, we're at the end of October, file a couple of appeals. This court, this committee goes away at the end of the year. There's no way it happens uh, by the Chair end of the Woman year. Chairwoman Cheney saying that if he doesn't, if he doesn't comply, they will take steps they need to take. What kind of steps are those? Well, I mean, there, there, there are things Congress can do. And listen, Congress actually has the ability to send their own sergeant of arms out to sort of get somebody mm -hmm. to testify. They don't, they don't do that. They've never done that. Um, but I think what they're looking at, look, in history, there have been several presidents who have been testified to appear before Congress, some even after they're out of office. Only Harry Truman, uh, that I believe, refused to do it because it was about McCarthyism and he just he thought he was getting set up. But the bottom line is, is that the, the president, former President Trump, would have a good argument for why he wouldn't show up. He was the president, lots of executive privilege. So I think that for Congress to try and get Merrick Garland to do something about it, Merrick Garland didn't do anything about Mark Meadows. So right. I think it's a pretty good guess that Garland wouldn't do much about President Trump showing up or not. And Paul, along these lines, former Trump attorney John Eastman, a, a judge, a yeah. federal judge, ruled that uh, he has to turn over documents, emails indicating that uh, they gave uh, information to Donald Trump that the the election narrative was false. It seemed that he admitted to that. Uh, pretty damning narrative there. It's, it's really difficult. Judge uh, David Carter, who issued that, and it's really about emails that are in the uh, related to the Georgia case, but now he's saying he's got to turn these over to the uh, January 6th committee. So here's what's important about that, because uh, there is an argument that Eastman is Trump's lawyer, right? That is an attorney-client relationship. How do you get around that? Well, in the law, there's an exception called the crime fraud exception. If you are emailing or communicating for the purpose of committing fraud or a crime, then that protection does not exist. Now, I, I know a lot of the former president's supporters are out there saying, well, he didn't do anything. I'm simply reporting what the judge did. Mm -hmm. And what the judge said in his opinion was he found that the numbers in those reports uh, which President Trump was touting were, were, were wrong, that Eastman was telling him those numbers aren't accurate, don't use those numbers, and the president did it anyway. It's Judge Carter who said this is evidence of crime and fraud, therefore it's not protected, therefore you must turn them over. Busy day in the Trump camp today. Yeah. Crony Steve Bannon has been sentenced to four months and a fine of $6,500. You say that's too lenient. Well, here's the thing. The prosecution asked for six months, and he could have faced up to two years. So, I mean, under the law, a year, there were two counts, a year for each, running consecutively. Could have been two years. But the prosecution said, give us the top end of six months, which are within the federal guidelines. But this judge only gave him four months. Interestingly enough, the judge also said, and by the way, let me know if you plan to appeal, because if you plan to appeal, I'm not going to put you in jail right now. We're going to let this go. And uh, that essentially is a message to Bannon. Bannon said, I'm going to appeal. So that process will take some time. I think ultimately Bannon loses that appeal because he, he did break the law in terms of not showing up and not, not showing up just to take the fifth, which everybody else does. He didn't even do that. So in the end, he will probably serve some time. But, you know, there are some, his lawyer is saying, we never got to present our case. The judge mm -hmm. wouldn't let us do it. So if an appeals court buys that, you know, we could see something happen here. The reason I said it wasn't enough briefly is because one of the purposes of punishment of uh, uh, prison is punishment it's deterrence to the public the question is who out there who would consider doing what Bannon did would be deferred well, by a four-month sentence yeah. there you go so if he had gotten two years or something hey that might give me some hesitation before I ever did anything like that but here we have four he's months. arguably the biggest uh, big lie purveyor out there what do you think uh, if his appeal fails 
does he get upheld as a, as a martyr by all of his legions of supporters and believers? Well, I think both his lawyer and Bannon have sort of already indicated that if he spends a day in jail, and it could be up to four months, that basically this all plays out as, as a martyr. I mean, I think anybody sort of tied to that, we have to just assume that nobody, there's, there's nobody in the former President Trump camp who's going to look and say, yeah, he deserves it, he should have showed up, he should have helped. Uh, the supporters of the president are going to stand behind Bannon uh, and say, look, the system, you know, got him and has taken him down. So that is what happens down the line. But you know, all that is an aside, the justice system has to do what the justice system mm -hmm. has to do. And that's along all of these lines, whether it's the former president or anybody else. Whether you agree with them or not, this is the way the process works. Let's talk about the midterms a bit. You yeah. say the Dems may be losing a little steam right now. You know, we talked, uh, after the, the Dobbs case came down in June, the, the one that overturned Roe versus Wade, I had a discussion with some of our colleagues, and they said, oh, this abortion case, man, that's gonna really, that's gonna be it when it comes to November. My comment was, no, it's going to be the economy. It is always the economy. And, and they went, oh no, it's abortion. I said, no, what? Americans have short memories. So it's not that anybody's forgetting about that, but, but that now was several months ago, but we go get gas every week. We go into the grocery store every week. We're spending a lot more money. Uh, somebody was on, just a, a, a patron was on TV saying something like, I spent $50. I don't have any meat or, or chicken in my cart yet. Mm -hmm. That's what I think people take with them into it. And so what polls are starting to show with economics being the number one issue, not just in Illinois, but everywhere, that's problematic for Democrats because right now they're in control. And while Democrats say, don't blame us, there's lots of other global reasons for all of this, all of which might be true, but no one's, but no one's going to see it that way. They're going to hold Democrats accountable. So yes, what looked like a, a red wave and then was a red trickle, mm -hmm. we'll see where it ends up, but things are moving back towards Republicans given those all right. standards. More candidates coming on your show this weekend. Yeah, this weekend we're going to have on, um, uh, a political report at nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Kwame Raul, our attorney general, he's looking to serve another term. His opponent, Tom DeVore, remember him? He's the one that sued Pritzker over the mask mandate mm -hmm. and stuff. Well, he is the Republican nominee. He'll join me as well. And then we're also going to talk, people don't know what to do with the with the ju judicial votes. How do I vote for judges and all that? We're going to explain that. A woman named uh, Maya Dukmasovic, say that 10 times, mm -hmm. uh, is going to join me from Injustice Watch. And she's going to explain this new, really cool uh, online tool people can use to see how candidates are rated uh, and what people say about them. Have they ever been for retention uh, battles? Right. Well, has anybody, have they been overturned by appellate courts and all of that. A really useful tool. We'll talk about all of that on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. All right. Thank you, sir.